Welcome to Wrong Time Watch. My name is Kevin, and in this video, we're looking at this watch on my wrist. And it's on my wrist currently because um, I had a heck of a time getting it on with this strap. So I won't uh, make you watch me struggling to get this on wrist. So this is the Seiko SNZF17. It normally comes on a metal bracelet, but I'm borrowing this from Chris at the watch lounge. And he sent it in on this nice um, Erica's original MN strap. So this watch is known as the Sea Urchin. So I have a six and a half inch wrist with 52 millimeter wristband. And the lug to lug on this watch is 49 millimeter. It's a little large for a Seiko, I think, in that in that dimension, uh, Seiko 5. So here it is on my wrist. I ha actually not had one of these straps in hand before either, so it's nice to be able to check it out on the strap. So I don't know what the method is for getting this on. I actually uh, attached it with two hands, and then I kind of slipped it over my wrist. Not sure if that's the correct way of doing it. So maybe with more practice, like I'm well, I'm sure I could probably get some kind of method down, but just borrowing this watch temporarily, so I had to make do. This has, of course, it has a hard lex crystal with an aluminum bezel insert. This has a push pull crown. <clears throat> First position. Should be your day and date. This is not hack. Sorry, it does not hand wind, nor does it hack. Pull it all the way out the for the time setting position, and the second hand keeps going and does not stop. This actually has a Seiko 7S36 movement. In my unboxing, I thought that it had a 7S26. For my research, they are essentially the same movement, just that the 7S. 3.6 has two more jewels, which apparently are non-functional. We'll zoom in on the dial here. There's a water resist. Water, 100 meter resist. And then Seiko 5 supports. I do like that the date wheel is blacked out to match the black dial. I've seen these um, years ago when, when they were more popular, I guess. I don't know if these are still for sale. I just, uh, I've been more of a SKX kind of guy, so I would just, I bought the Seiko SKX as opposed to the Sea Urchin. So let's go over the specs, or the dimensions. Again, this is 49 millimeter lug to lug. Let me zoom back out a little bit here. 49 millimeter lug to lug. The case diameter on this is 42, and the thickness is a little thick at 13 millimeter, and it has 22 millimeter lugs. So we compare this to my, well, let's use this, actually I'll use a different SKX. This is the SKX 171. Case is the same size as that other one over there, the SKX009. The thickness is 13. Diameter on this is 42, but the lug to lug is a little smaller. I believe that's 47, if I remember correctly. But the reason why I grabbed this one is because it also has a black dial with a black date window. I don't care for this bezel. One of these days I might put a SKX007 bezel on it, or a ceramic, or maybe not. I haven't decided. So this one's pretty much stock, but here's a size comparison. They're very similar in size. This just has the 4 o'clock crown, and that has the 3 o'clock crown. This is the actual dive watch, too. So we'll do a loom shot here in a minute. I'd like to talk about this strap a little bit. I have not experienced this strap before, but it's, it's nice and stretchy. 
And I don't know how I feel about this nylon fabric on wrist. I don't know if you're supposed to cinch it down really tight so it doesn't move or just let, leave, let, let it be a little loose. But just wearing it for a, a few minutes here, I don't really care for this, but I, I may grow into it. Actually, I think I have a watch around here that I bought a while ago that I need to unbox, but I believe that came with one of these straps, or maybe not. So I um, I looked these straps up online, and looks like they're on a new version now. The engraving is a little different on the buckle here, and there's some other differences that I'm not going to go into right now. But those straps are 75 euro, which right now today is about 90 dollars US. I think this watch itself was probably about ninety dollars. I don't exactly know how much they were. So just a quick look at this watch. The other thing I like more about the SKX is is I like the um, the curves that this has. This is just a kind of a straight slab profile on this. It's like it's polished on the sides and then brushed on the top. I don't know. I don't know why I never picked one of these up. I guess I just didn't like it enough to, to buy it. So let me know what you guys think of this watch here. The uh, SNZF17. I do have another Seiko 5 from around the same time frame that this one was, was for sale. And that one is the... I think it was the S. In ZH57, otherwise known as the Seiko 55 Fathoms. I prefer the look of that. I actually need to find that one and do a review on that as well. But anyway, let's uh, I'll, I'll pause the video here and we'll get into a loom shot and we'll end the video with that. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, I would appreciate it if you could do so. Like the video and uh, leave a comment. So I'll be right back with the loom shot. All right, so obviously the SNZF17 is on the left, and on the right is my SKX171. The loom on these are very similar, and actually the uh, SNZF17, the hands are brighter than the SKX171. So there's one good thing about the Seiko 5s and other Seiko dive watches is the loom is, is very good on these. So as always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next video.